This is Terrence Andre Banks with Information Age Financial Solutions coming to you today from an article I read from SRS Rocker Report. Uh, the U.S. economic crisis ahead, major failure of analysts to spot danger. That's the title. Of course, the title spoke out to me. But SS, the reason I like SRS Rocker Reports is because he does what other analysts does not really put that much emphasis on in his reports about energy and how that's linked to the economy. And of course, he does another point in and very relatable article and one that you definitely need to pay attention to, especially for the information age, because energy in all forms of society, you know, what age of history we're in, it requires energy for us to exist. But his different points about it makes it so valuable, especially because in the information age where things are moving at a speed of sight, technology is continually changing. It makes you believe that the fundamentals of what we have in a finite world that we live in, that these mines and things have to be oil and precious metals and everything that precious metals actually make up our complex society and as other countries come on to be more complex that there's an infinite amount which it really isn't so let me go on and read this is a pretty lengthy article so i'm going to take a couple of different excerpts from it but i'm going to begin by the reading the first part and then scroll down to the middle part where he makes his more argument and then kind of end up with the last so let me begin the U.S. economy continues towards an epic crisis, while the overwhelming majority of the analysts are completely in the dark, even though some alternative media analysts understand that our highly leveraged fiat money system and markets will crash, they fail to understand the underlying reasons. Thus, we are heading into a future we are not prepared because the blind continues to lead the blind. I don't mean to be harsh on my fellow analysts, but the truth remains that the public is being misled due to the inability of market analysts unable to spot the real dangers. So we continue to move step by step to the, to the edge of the cliffs while no one seems to notice or no one seems to care. Um, he goes on a little bit here to explain what I mean about the major failure of, future, failure of our analysts to spot danger. I'm going to provide two examples and some additional information. It's crucial the reader understands the facts and real data about our dire predicament and not be, become lost or confused in regards to lousy conspiracies or misinformation. He begins by talking about Bill Weir, where he made an article when I wrote the article, Blind Conspiracy, the gold market is heading towards a big fundamental change. He was referring to energy. Now, Bill, Bill Weir is well respected in the alternative media. Um, I like his work. And he has a road of the ruler theory. And his road of the ruler theory, there's supposed to be hundreds of millions of ounces of gold hidden in the Grand Canyon. And he, he goes on to state, and I'm going to read you a little bit what Mr. Weir said. Mr. Weir thought by reading by the 1912 New York Times article in detail and by explaining some additional exploration and geological information about gold in the Grand Canyon to his followers, this would further prove his road to ruler theory. Unfortunately, the reading of an old article to prove a point does not change the fact that the gold in the Grand Canyon was uneconomical to mine in 1912 as it is today. Nothing has changed in over 100 years. Investors in 1912 were just as gullible and stupid as some investors are today. Now, I don't know what that's implying there, but it's pretty harsh. But one needs to be mindful of that. He's making his argument here why. And it goes into great deals of pointing out every example. First, example number one, understanding the false one million ton Grand Canyon hidden gold theory and understanding why gold is rare and valuable. In this, he gives on... Um, historical document titled Submerged Culture Resources Site Report, Charles H. Spencer, Mining Operation and Paddle Wheel Steamboat. That's where he gives a link to that so you get to prove his, um, his theory of why it's uneconomical to mine and why Bill Weir is off in the fact that we can just get this hundred, one ton of gold from the Grand Canyon. It goes into great detail about that, explaining how on several a numbers of occasions how the, this particular individual um, we raised money to get to mine the Gam Canyon, but came coming up false. The end result was they <laughs> lost a great deal of money and gives pictures and details about this. And I'm not going to, as I mentioned, I'm not going to read the whole part of the article because it's pretty lengthy, but he does make a strong argument. I'm just going to cut to some of the different excerpts of here that stuck out, and I encourage you to read the whole article. I imagine investors vested expenses gold mine operating were all that smart. It just made evidence that only dynamite going off made them think the operation was successful. Again, he gives strike three and <laughs> explaining how even in 1912, massive amounts of money, uh, because it's become 
uneconomical to man mine the Grand Canyon was back then, and it proves to be again back now. That you, if they couldn't do it then, well, one they're saying with the technology that we have, that's what the rotor rooter theory is for Big Square, that we're able to do it now. The truth is, as he explained out constantly, that economically as well as the finite the, the economically this is financial suicide and also listen i'm gonna read out this part here i provided clear factual examples that the gold mining in the grand canyon failed miserably while there might be million billions of ounces of gold in the grand canyon only a fool is going to spend more money to extract it than it's worth and that was what all that the argument he was making when he used the past reference to that uh, the past attempt into that historical research he provided there. If you go back to the article, up, you can find that there. Also, you would probably have to destroy the Grand Canyon in order to get the gold. And no one wants to see the Grand Canyon destroyed just to get the gold. Not only is that attempt to strike gold financial suicide, it's complete madness to destroy such a beautiful part of nature for the almighty dollar. When are we going to wake up here? I agree with you totally there, Bix. I mean, not Bix. Uh, Steve Sangangelo, if we understand that our world can only have mined approximately 180 to 200,000 metric tons of gold in human history, the notion that we have one plus million tons in the Grand Canyon or, or hidden Nazi vaults or Yamashadi's hoard loses all credibility. He explains how the production of all, he gives a great chart here. He's known to give fantastic charts. That's why I always like reading his articles. It takes a heck of a lot of energy and capital to mine and produce gold. Individuals who claim they are five times, five to ten times more gold in the world than humans were physically able to mine fail to grasp the fundamentals of economic resource extraction. Basically, it means there are limits to what we can do. I want to repeat that line again. Basically, it means that we are there are limits to what we can do. However, those who focus mainly on sensationalized conspiracy theories seem to be unable to separate fact from fiction. This is quite a shame because individuals need good factual information to be able to make better decisions for their future. If they are receiving disinformation or correct data from either the mainstream or all alternative media, they'll be making bad decisions. Very good point. Very good point. Investors need to understand that the world has a limited amount of gold and the value of it should be much higher than what it is currently. The funding of the public funds into stocks, bonds, and real estate have given them an illusion of wealth. This illusionary wealth will evaporate when the global oil industry starts to disintegrate. All right, he goes on to produce number example number two, why most analysts are not understanding the dire consequences we're in. Advanced technology won't save us, but it will take us down quicker. Um, and this is, I'm going to read a lot of this part because this is fantastic when he proves this because this goes on with the information age, how technology is going to save us from, again, a finite world where we're not using burning oil and natural gas. The notion that advanced technology will save us is just as erroneous as the belief that the world has one million tons of gold hidden. Both are based on believing in fantasy over fact. For example, many people believe that solar wind, solar wind power, and electric vehicles are our answers to our coming energy crisis. Unfortunately, renewable energy sources really aren't renewable. It's worth repeating. Unfortunately, renewable energy sources aren't renewable. Furthermore, without burning the oil, Burning of oil, natural gas, and coal, the manufacturers of solar, wind power, plants, and electric vehicles would be impossible. <laughs> However, this doesn't stop the high-tech leaders of our day from promoting electric vehicles such as a viable situation. The example I'm going to focus on is Elon Musk's notion that an electrical semi-tractor truck will be a solution for our future commercial transportation needs. Great picture here. Elon Musk is well known for being a futurist in terms of what he's doing. Great capitalist, great entrepreneur. But... There's some flaws to this, as he's pointing out here. While this is most certainly a near futuristic looking truck, if we drive into the deep, if we dive into the details of its projected performance, we find out that is what that is was better just to keep on <laughs> keep it on the drawing board. I'm not doing a good job of, of reading this out, but uh, he does make some colorful commentary here. According to article, given the law of physics, can a Tesla semi rally go 500 miles and what will be the price? The maximum weight of a truck allowed on the road is 80,000 pounds. So if the body weight of a diesel truck is the minimum 30, 30, 33,000 pounds, then the maximum amount of cargo that can be carried by a diesel truck is 47,000 pounds. The authors found that the weight of the battery pack needed for a truck to go 900 miles is 54,000 pounds. There goes the payload, 54,000 plus 29,000 truck weight is 83,000 pounds. 
over the 80,000 pound road limit. And this truck that cannot haul cargo will set you back $500 to $650,000 for the battery alone. <laughs> there goes the proof about that. Um, the article is going is quoting a study by two scientists about the next generation battery technology to make a practical electric semi truck. The scientists calculated that for an electric truck to go 900 miles, it would need a battery pack that weighed 54,000 pounds. This is quite amusing because the normal weight limit of a cargo a diesel semi truck can transport is 47,000 pounds. This is because the empty truck and trailer weigh approximately 33,000 pounds. The total weight limit for a semi a typical semi truck trailer and load on US roads and highways is 80,000 pounds. Alice Freeman, who runs an energy skeptic site, which I found the article using data from the two scientists, put together the following table on the different battery weights needed for various trucking models. And he gives a good chart here explaining that. As you can see, for an electric semi truck to go 900 miles, it would require a battery pack that weighed 27 metric tons or 54,000 pounds. Now, if they decide to drop a distance to 600 miles, then the battery would need to weigh 18 metric tons or 36,000 pounds. This is still bad news because the company with the nice new electric semi truck could only haul cargo that weighed 11,000 pounds. How economical is that when a diesel semi truck can haul more than four times that amount at 47,000 pounds? <laughs> Proves it right there, That's that goes on. The bottom line to the authors is that a six to 900 mile range truck will use most or all of their battery power to move the battery itself, not the cargo. With all our advanced technology, we still come up with the economic limits. Here, the scientists found that for an electric truck to go six to, six to 900 miles, it will use most of all or their battery power to move that battery pack itself, not the cargo. Where, we have, where have we heard that one before? I'll refresh your memory. Guess again, in my previous article stated that Charles A. Spencer's steamboat was burning most of the coal that it was transporting to power the boilers for the gold mining operations. Gives that excerpt again. He shows different articles about it. I mean, different excerpts from it, different pictures from it. And here's where it goes from its title. U.S. economy heading towards a serious crisis. If we are wasting our time on renewable energy technology that doesn't work or solve our energy problem, we must be in serious trouble. The world has developed an economic system based on liquid fuel consumption. Our highly complex retail markets are based on a just on time inventory system. We need to continue producing liquid fuels at the current rate. Our economic captivity will decline. Unfortunately, the cheap to produce oil is mostly gone and we are now being forced to produce low quality, low energy return on investment oil, which he puts out here. The Venezuelan economy is going into the crapper because it holds mostly heavy oil. Very good point about that. Let me read that again. Unfortunately, cheap to produce oil is mostly gone, and we're now being forced to produce low quality energy return on investment oil. And he gives an example the Venezuelan economy has gone into the crapper because it holds mostly heavy oil. The Stato CEO stated recently that they will no longer go after heavy oil or oil sands resources. Thus, 70% of the world's oil reserves are heavily oil and oil sands. Furthermore, the Conco Phillips CEO has, Conco Phillips, which is a large oil company, as you all know, CEO, CEO also re remarked that they weren't going to invest in projects that needed $50 or more to break even. This is terrible news. They, they aren't just many sub $50 or $50 oil projects available anymore. The coming collapse of the US and global oil production will be a shock to the public. Virtually no one is prepared. If we continue to waste our time on busy conspiracies, it's busy, let me read that again because I've messed it up. If we continue to waste our time on lousy conspiracies or advanced technology that doesn't work, we'll be heading over the cliff, blind as a bat. While we can't solve the dying energy predicament we are facing, we can at least know that we're up against and make changes as best as we can. However, only a faction of people will get it. Most will continue to do what they're doing, change, chasing fantasy over fact. <laughs> and that pretty much ends it there. Again, we have to pay attention to the energy. Read the article. It's worth your time, uh, especially because of just what the U.S. economic crisis is. It's going to be ahead. And it, it, it takes time. And just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean the individual the individuals talking about this is not correct. It's only a matter of time. And I believe 
you're going to see some major cracks 2018 because we got 10,000 people retiring every day. And with the finite world that we live in, energy is definitely um, something that's needed. So until my next video, I'm out.